So you've been itching for a change. You want to get out of the career you're in and get into something that has more security, better pay, even gives you the opportunity to have a lot more freedom than you do. And you've decided that you want to make the shift into tech. Now what? <laughs> It's your girl Nicole Young and welcome back to my channel the best place for people who want to make a career shift in the tech learn how to code and gain more freedom through freelancing in today's video we are going to be talking about what you need to do when you decide that you want to make a career shift into tech there's so much information out there and it can be really daunting when you're making a shift from another industry into the tech industry. There's so much information to be had, so many different career paths, certifications, coding languages. There's so much out there and I completely understand how daunting that can be. But I know that this is something that you want and that you are motivated to figuring it out so that you can take part of all of the benefits to be had in the tech industry. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a few of the best things that you should do when you're in that state of making plans to make a shift into tech. So make sure that you hit the thumbs up if you like this content and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any other videos like this one. So there are five things that I wish I would have done before I got started in tech that I'm going to share with you now. The first one is to make sure you give yourself time to really think about what it is that you want from this career shift. Like I mentioned before, there are so many career paths, so many options for getting into the tech industry. There are some that require coding, there are some that don't, there are some that require advanced schooling and some that you can do by just learning on your own or taking online courses. But how do you know where to start with all of that? I suggest giving yourself time to really reflect and think about what it is that you want from this career shift because if you are trying to get out of an industry or a company that you are not liking, the worst thing that would happen would be to get into something in tech and you not like it as well. Start spending time thinking and reflecting on the current situation that you're in and what you want to ultimately get out of your opportunity shifting into tech. I suggest journaling or writing down what you're unhappy with in your current position and job and what things that you think would make you happier in this new job in tech. Just be honest with yourself and what you want and why you're so interested in getting into tech and have that at the forefront of your mind for number two, which is research, research, research. There is literally nothing that you can't learn from Google. Obviously, I say that all the time. Make sure that when you are first making that shift into tech that you really do tons of research on the job opportunities that are out there, the different career paths, the type of schooling and certifications that are required for different jobs and opportunities. During your first step when you're journaling and you kind of have the idea of what you want, use that information to find career paths that will complement that and offer you that because I guarantee you if you decide you want to go into something like data science it's going to be a lot more involved um, and probably require you to be more uh, tied to some type of job than maybe being a freelance web developer would be. So you just want to think about all of your options. I know that that's not the case for everyone, but you definitely just want to be aware of the types of work environments that are related to the types of career paths that you might be interested in. You also want to research the types of certification or skills that you need to learn for those career paths. If it's coding that is involved, you want to know what kind of languages that you need to learn to be able to be successful at that career. And courses and resources that you will need to learn those skills. Do research on all of that stuff. Do not 
rush this process because it is probably the most important part. And don't be concerned if you have multiple options in your head at this moment when you are doing research where you don't know exactly what you want to do. Just do research, get an idea, a full idea of what is out there and what is required for each thing and just start to narrow it down as you learn more because you will have those gut feelings about certain positions over other ones about which ones work for you and which ones don't. So let me know down in the comments, what have you been researching already? Do you think you've done enough research or are you someone that relies heavily on what you hear from other people online or through blogs and stuff like that? Let me know. Number three, this is something I wish I would have done a lot earlier when I was getting into tech and that is signing up for newsletters and following Google trends about things that are going on in the tech industry. And I know if you want to be like a developer or you just want to do software engineering that it may not seem relevant to be learning about DevOps or what the top companies are doing, but I definitely think it's important to stay on top of the trends, just following a daily newsletter or getting Google trends on certain keywords is enough to stay on top of current trends and be alert when things are happening in industries or positions or career paths that are going to directly affect you as you're learning. I think that because the tech industry is ever evolving and it's evolving very quickly, that it's important that we stay on top of those trends and understand how different changes in different parts of the industry affect the parts of the industry that we are partaking in. For example, if there are new trends in interface design or user experience design, that will still have an effect on you as a front end or full stack developer because you're going to have to understand those trends to know how to integrate them and build them when you get to that point. And I think it's just really important to stay on top of what is going on at the very least in the sphere that you operate in. So number four is what I mentioned so often for people who are just starting their journey in tech and that is to start building a community around yourself of like-minded people. It is so important to have people who are on the same learning journey as you or who are in the same or similar life experience where they are making a shift into tech because they are going to understand the struggles that you are having and they are going to understand and be able to empathize and help you in that in those areas in ways that people who haven't gone through that won't be able to truly understand or be able to help you with possibly. So I think that getting started, joining group early on, it can help you to build friendships and communities and connections that could potentially help you down the line in finding jobs, in finding learning opportunities and you name it. Like, I think that a huge, huge thing that benefited me in my journey was the fact that I prioritized building a community in tech very early on when I was just starting to take it seriously. And it really changed the game for me because it is essentially what helps me to gain my confidence, find new opportunities, and find the resources and tools that I needed to really take the, the leap into learning how to code and then becoming a freelance developer. Number five is to start making a plan. Now I made a video about making a consistency plan or a learning plan, and you can check that out above, but you should definitely start making a plan for yourself that will help guide you through this process. If you have to leave your job, if you have to learn new things, new skills, take classes or certifications, you need to set some goals for yourself. You need to set timelines and deadlines. You might need to start saving money for certain things. And I think that it's really important that you have a plan before you jump into it because that is the one thing I didn't do. I didn't set a plan in place when I got into the tech industry and then started learning how to code and then decided to quit my job and uh, start freelancing. I didn't make a plan ahead of time for a lot of those things and 
I think that if I would have just set back and been less impulsive and spontaneous that it would have helped me a lot um, get over some of the rough patches and I think that there are some difficulties that I had that I might not have ever even had if I just would have planned ahead a little bit. So I know that this can be a lot and it can be super overwhelming but trust me when I say that going through these steps and just giving yourself time to be very intentional about the steps that you take as you're making this shift is going to make a huge difference. It's going to help you start on a really solid and strong foundation and it's going to help you to get a, a, a little head start, especially um, ahead of people who are kind of being more spontaneous and less planned out than you are. You're gonna do great and I'm excited for you. So as you work through these steps, make sure you check out the videos that are linked above. They are going to guide you through some of the more specific things that I talked about in this video. Make sure you also check out the description for lots of helpful links that I've left for you there or go on over to my Instagram and feel free to DM me and leave your questions there. That's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any more videos like this one. I'd love you guys. I'm rooting for you and I can't wait to see you in the next one.